Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is 10am in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. Do remember though, if you miss the live streams, you can watch the catch-up streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2pm Pacific Time in the US, which is 7am in Australia or 10pm if you are in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well. We are working on the Temple of the Winds model in 3D Studio Max. Um, we modeled it up. We're going to be texturing it in Substance Painter initially, doing an underlying sort of texture. And then I'm going to be taking a couple of the assets into Mari by the Foundry to do an overpaint on, just to make them a little bit more unique. Uh, remember, if you've got any questions or anything you're not sure about, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. If I can help in any way, I'm happy to try. If you just want to pop in and say hello, that is always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that is completely fine. Uh, okay, so let's just pull Max up. So this is what we're working on, this Temple of the Winds terrace model. Uh, these are the terraces here. I'm creating like a kit bash. This is a model I'm going to be selling in my 3D store. Uh, and, and so I'm going to allow people to be able to put the number of stairs on the terrace that they want, all the way from no stairs to four stairs. So that's the reason for all those terrace pieces in the background. Uh, the model will be will be sold as like a kit bash. So, alrighty. Uh, so yeah, some of some of the pieces I'm going to overpaint in Mari, like these pieces here. Uh, so these are just like a base texture. I'll overpaint them to give them a little bit more character when I uh, jump into Mari. I won't be overpainting every single asset. Uh, just I'll be picking and choosing which ones would do with an overpaint in Mari. Okay. So let us, we, we've been working from the top down, so I guess we might as well keep going that way. Um, there is just a cup, one thing I want to do, which is just a little bit of housekeeping before we jump into texturing up some more bits and pieces. And that is, I've noticed when I've exported these textures from um, Substance Painter, they're all called the same thing. That's going to make, make it a nightmare for me to actually um, bring the model into Eon View, which is what we're going to be using to do the beauty renders in because Eon View specializes in just doing uh, 3D environments, so I'm going to be using that software to make the environment for the beauty renders. Um, but and Also because I'm selling the model, I really need the texture names to be a bit more <laughs> specific to the asset and not so generic. So we're going to uh, just go through the textures and I'm going to rename them quickly. At the moment they're in my temp directory. Uh, let's start with Dome Ring Lower, why not? So I think the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this name. Just give me a sec guys, I'm just going to grab my phone. Um, if I have to cut the stream short today it's because I have to pick up a friend of mine from the hospital. Engine, good to see you. Kreutz TV, good to see you as well. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Um, uh, well, uh, yeah, so I'm just letting you guys know if the stream has to be cut short, it's just because I have to go and pick up a friend from hospital today. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is um, rename these texture files. So I'm going to keep the color underscore at the end, but I just want to rename the beginning of them too what they're supposed to be. We're not using the height, we're using the metallic. It's good to see you guys. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Digitalis, it's good to see you Digitalis. How are you? How's things? Uh, Digitalis guys and girls is a um, streamer as well. You should check his Twitch stream out. I think I noticed he was streaming just before I went live. And the roughness. Did 
didn't I get the raid? No, I think I might have got the raid. I see that the uh, engine and Kreitz TV popped in. <laughs> and thank you Eng Engine X 3D and Kreitz TV for following the channel. I do appreciate it. So thank you very much, guys or girls. Uh, so I did get the raid. Thank you very much, Digitalis. I do appreciate it. And again, Digitalis is also a streamer on Twitch. You guys should check him out when he streams. <laughs> so how's things, Digitalis? Are you good? Alrighty, so I'm just going through renaming a couple of these textures so that we are a little bit more organized. I'm just going to close these windows down. Now I'm going to have to um, just change these texture paths because they're still pointing to the old textures. <laughs> I'm terrible with your usernames. I will apologize up front to you guys. Is it Zlucard? Zlucard? <laughs> How are you? And also I want to thank Ian for following the channel. Thank you, Ian. I do appreciate it. And Zuclard, I, I'm so, I hope I haven't uh, mangled your username there completely. Read it backwards. <laughs> I'm... Do what, Dracul Z, or Dracul, Dracul. Thank you, <laughs> Lucard, for the follow, or Dracul, if that's the way it is. Well, yeah, I do appreciate it, Ian. I appreciate all you guys following my channel, and I appreciate Digitalis for the raid. That's incredibly good of you, Digitalis. Uh, yep. And again, for my viewers, remember, uh, Digitalis is also a streamer, and you should check him out, because he's cool. Dracula. Oh, okay. Well, if I, call, if I call you Dracula, then I'll try and remember that because it's a bit different to the username, but I'll try and remember Dracula. <laughs> Sniper Echo, it's good to see you, Sniper. How are you? Uh, Crouch TV says he's cool. I can confirm. Good to hear. <laughs> you All you guys are cool. There is no one that's not cool. Uh, yeah, so this is just a little bit of housekeeping I'm doing at the moment to make sure that my texture names are going to be easy for us to rehook up when we get into Eon View, because Eon View now, anyone that doesn't know, the new version, uh, you can actually use PBR materials in, so you never used to be able to, but you can now. Uh, Sniper says, I swear I just started work, that was 12 hours ago. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, dude. Isn't that how it goes? Uh, but it is very good to see all you guys don't work too hard, Sniper. I know Sniper Echo's actually got um, got a lot of work on at the moment with a project he's doing. What's going on there? Oh, my, my chat scrolled up and I'm thinking, where did Sniper Echo's message go? Uh, Dracula says, do people still use that, that these days? Are you talking about Eon View? Are you being cheeky? Oh, I'm going to give you the stink eye because yes, people still do use that. Um, it's got a bad reputation because it can be slow to render, which is true. It has gotten better with every new version, but it is still slow to render. Uh, I did a project when I first started streaming on Twitch where I showed you guys ways you can speed your renders up by, by all different sort of means, using backdrops, that sort of thing. Um, and I'll be going through that again when we jump into view to do the beauty renders for this model. Sniper girl, it's good to see you. Sniper is in the zone, Christ TV, that's right. And hello to you, Sniper girl. Uh, Dracula says, I mean, if you make money out of it, hats off. <laughs> well, again, I, um, a bit of background for me, for you guys that are new that are watching me. Uh, I used to work in games development. Then I worked in film. Now I work in arts biz. And in arts biz, we use it all the time. Uh, I do as part of the studio to, to do beauty renders for the different architectural models that we have to render out for clients. Uh, you don't need to. You can use your 3D program. Like I, I use V-Ray to do renders in Max. I'll just close this for a minute. Yeah, so I use generally V-Ray for the studio. Um, 
but we still do use Eon View as well. If you use V-Ray, you can use things like Multiscatter to or Forest Pack Pro to actually get an environment that way. I think Clarice is the name of another piece of software that you can do environments in, which is very good. Uh, Digitalis says, what are we doing today? We are doing, we're, I'm starting to texture up this model. So all the bits that are white, I'm going to start texturing up. So that's, that's the plan. And I'm going to be doing that in uh, Eon, <laughs> Eon View, in uh, Substance Painter. A couple of the bits and pieces I'm going to be taking also into Mari, but I'm going to do that at the end. Uh, and I'm going to be over painting them in Mari. Just a few bits and pieces here and there, not all of them. 3D Studio Max, baby. That's right, Digitalis. 3D Studio Max all the way. Max is my baby. Love 3D Studio Max. Uh, Dracula says, I see. 3D Studio Max. Nafigil says, two crites. Love those. Thank you, Dracula. I'm glad you like it. We, uh, we get it. It'll start to look a lot better once we start to actually, um, texture it up properly. Uh, and again, this is going to be for sale in my 3D store, which is, and I'm making it into a kit bash. That's why we have these other pieces in the background. They're just uh, terraces so people can choose the number of stairs they want to put around their Temple of the Winds. So just in case you're wondering why we have all these bit terrace bits in the background, that's what that's all about. I'm actually going to be uh, adding particle effects here. So I'm, this is going to be a fountain. And I'm going to be adding flame effects around these uh, decorative pieces here on top of the columns as well. So. And we'll be doing, I'm doing the uh, the particle effects in Phoenix by the Chaos Group, the same people that make V-Ray. And then we're going to take the model into Eon View to do a beauty render. Uh, Crouch TV says, oh man, I miss V-Ray now. I love V-Ray. Love V-Ray. It can be a little bit intimidating for people to use when they first start using it, but um, it's really powerful, really good rendering engine and really fast now as well. So that's what these toolbars and Macs up here are, the V-Ray and Phoenix, the particle system. Sniper says, Phil lies, he loves ZBrush. Oh yes, you know how much I love ZBrush Sniper Echo. I love that program. I love that interface so much. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, yeah, I love ZBrush and the interface. That's right. You're such trolls. You're both trolls. Uh, Nginx 3D says, can you show us textured parts? What do you want to see? What, what textured parts do you want to see? This is a textured part at the top here. Uh, now I'm using a DirectX shader inside of 3D Studio Max so that what we see in the viewport is what we see in Substance Painter while we were texturing it up. So that's the, the top bit. This is the stairs at the front. Wrong button. And uh, some of these I'm going to have to take, I'm going to do a, a bit of a touch up in Marion, some of the textures on these statues and things. Fact, Sniper Echo says that's not true. <laughs> Crouch TV says, any advice on starting up a 3D asset store? Okay, that's something we haven't really spoken about before on my stream. I get lots of questions about what you should put in your portfolio. Okay, so you want to, you want to start selling your models in a 3D store. Some advice about that. Uh, don't throw your model on every 3D store you find. So <laughs> don't go hell for leather. I mean, it's a good way to cover your bases if you want to make more money that way but you run the risk, an added uh, risk of having your model stolen and put online for free, which negates the whole fact of selling it to begin with. So my, my, my advice to begin with is choose a few stores to sell on. Don't sell on every 3D store. Uh, some 3D stores will give you a better rate if you sign up to, exclusive, to be exclusive with them, which means you can't sell on other 3D stores. I generally do not recommend you do that. I would never make myself exclusive to one 3D shop. I want to have the ability to sell it where I want because it's my work. And the extra um, the extra uh, income you get, like instead of a 30% cut to them, they take a 20% cut, or if you're lucky, maybe a 15. But that extra 10%, I'd rather have the ability to sell it wherever I want to, whenever I want to. 
So yeah, that's the other thing. I would not sign an exclusive deal with any 3D store. Um, limit the number of 3D stores. Uh, put a variety of stuff online for sale. Uh, you'll find out after you start selling stuff what people like and what they don't. Uh, and then you start making stuff that sells well. And a good example is this terrace here. I have quite a few different terraces in my 3D store. Let me just open up my website. Uh, again, if you, you don't know who I am, you can go to my website, phildoes3d.com. You can read up about me, look at my gallery, all that sort of thing there. Um, I actually sell my work directly through my, my own website here as well as on the creative market and also on ArtStation. So at the moment, you can buy my models on the creative market and ArtStation. I, I'm a brokered artist for Eon View as well, but uh, their store has been offline for a year, so it's supposed to be coming back, and when it does, and if it does, I'll be selling there as well. But that's probably, I'm going to limit it to those three stores, as well as my own shop here as well. Um, because I pay no commissions on people that buy stuff through my store. That's why I like to sell it through my own website. So, number one, best thing to do, sell it through your own website so you don't pay commission to anyone. Uh, and it also allows me to give... Um, to give subs a 50% discount if they buy through my store. So what else? Yes, uh, start with a variety of stuff, a variety of price points as well. Like if I go to, um, if I go to my creative market store, you'll see that I've got a variety of different types of models. There's also, uh, no, I don't want that. A lot of different types of models, a lot of different price points as well. Anything else? Uh, da, da. Thanks, Engine 3D, Engine X3D. I'm glad you like it. Uh, Engine X3D says like a photogrammetry. Yeah, some of the models you just saw in my in that terrace are photogrammetry. I did uh, just before we started this texturing stage when I was modeling it up on Twitch. All of these all the steps for me modeling that terrace are under the video section on my Twitch page or on my YouTube channel. So if you want, you can. Watch me make the entire thing. The previous streams were um, me showing you how you could take photogrammetry objects that you've photographed in the real world, take bits and pieces of them and make them into something new as far as the 3D model goes. Um, and that's what I did with that terrace. I've taken different bits of photogrammetry from different objects and I've combined them all into a new 3D model that I designed. So, uh, you're taking notes, good to hear. Kreitz TV, um, Sniper Girl says, I'm honestly looking at selling my photogrammetry assets. Well, you should. Everybody should sell their stuff if it's good enough. I fully endorse that. It's a good way to make a bit of extra money. Don't don't believe the rumors that they tell you on these sites where you're going to get rich selling your stuff online. You're not. Maybe people just don't like my models, but you can make a, a, a decent income, but it's not going to be an income that will replace a full-time job. At least that's not what I've found, and I've been selling online for like over seven years now. So, uh, but you can certainly you can certainly make some nice money through it. Not saying you can't, but not enough to supplement an income. It's, it's like Twitch. Unless you're one of the really big streamers, you're not going to be able to uh, quit your job and just be a Twitch streamer. Yeah, <laughs> usually not anyway. Never say never. Uh, but you should sell your photogrammetry stuff, sniper girl. You should sell that van as well. Android Lust, it's good to see you, Android Lust. How are you? You well? Sniper Girl says hi to Android Lust. Everyone says hi, hi to Android Lust, except me because I'm late to reading my chat. I'm sorry you missed me yesterday. That's okay. I'll forgive you this once, Android Lust. Just this once. You're forgiven. Time slipped up on you. That's fine. Uh, I've noticed people have said too that um, that their notifications aren't going out on tw from Twitch when, when streamers they follow go live. So that could be a thing too. Uh, Crides TV says, dude, thank you so much for the advice and insight. No problem. Remember, if I'm streaming and you've got any questions, you can feel free to ask me at any time. I'm on Twitch to uh, actually interact with you guys more than I am to work on this. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I need to make this model for my store because I've got customers saying, when's the next model being released? But um, my main reason for being on Twitch is to encourage you guys to do 3D and to answer any questions you guys might have. If I can answer them, I'm not saying I know everything. Uh, Sniper Girl says there's also several tutorials on Discord for photogrammetry. That's true. Remember to join the Discord server, guys and girls. That's the chat, the link I've just popped into chat here. 
Um, uh, cause only subs can post links in Twitch chat, but everyone can post links in Discord. There is a tutorials and video section on there that you can look through that has some really cool stuff that people have um, posted over the course of uh, them joining the Discord server. So it's not stuff just that I've posted, it's stuff that all the users on, on the Discord have posted in the gallery, in the uh, video tutorials part. You can link to your art station in the folios section chat. Or you can post images in the gallery of the stuff you're working on and I can show it on stream if you want. If you don't feel comfortable with me showing it on stream, I won't. Uh, Smokery says, would be nice to pay off a bill or two from passive income. Well, you could certainly do that with selling stuff online. I won't, won't say you can't. Uh, everyone's going to be different. It's really going to depend on, on the models you're selling, how long you've been selling them. Uh, because initially people are a little bit wary about buying models from people they've not bought from before. It's like a catch-22. I haven't bought from you, so I'm reluctant to buy from you, but until people do start buying from you, then they're not going to trust you to make sure the model is up to snuff, you know? Uh, but it, it, So it takes a little while to get the ball rolling. Uh, but once people are used to your models and they've bought from you before, they tend to be repeat customers and buy from you again. At least that's what I've found. Um, Smokery says, pay off the monthly internet bill with models. Well, yes, you could do that. You could certainly pay off the internet bill with, with sales through models. And remember too, the more models you have online, the more sales you'll make. So the bigger your catalogue of stuff for sale, the greater the chance you're going to make more money. Um, but having said that though, quality is number one. Because word of mouth will get around. If you, if you make models just because you want to make money and you're not doing good quality work, uh, people are not going to buy them. So don't try and rush through models to get your catalogue of stuff for sale puffed up. If the quality isn't there, people won't buy them anyway. So must make sure you put quality into your work. And you'll be guaranteed repeat customers if you do. Again, that's through talking through experience because I've been selling online for over seven years now. Uh, Smurfery says, that's why I have a phone alarm for Phil's dreams. That's all good. Good on you, Smurfery Barbecue. Everybody should be like you. What a good idea. Android Dust says, I should do that. You should. Everybody should do that. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yes, let me just uh, fix this DirectX shader up because we changed the names, so we need to change them back here. Uh, this is the lowest, lower ring, lower ring. That's the one. Michael Ricker says, Twitter alerts have failed me yet. Haven't failed me yet. Well, there you go. And I always do post to my Twitter account. Do remember that too. If you want to fill me, follow me at PhilDoes3D on Twitter, uh, you can get a reminder that way because I always post to Twitter before I go live. I haven't given that spill for a while. How I Snow <laughs> Okay, let us uh, just replace these with the correct named versions now. So the lowering... Uh, again, I must make sure, because I'm using the DirectX shader, the, the override, uh, again, I'll just hide my camera for a minute, uh, override the gamma to 1. It's really, really important if you're using the DirectX shader in Max. You must, must make sure you do that. Snuckerica says, needs practice, Phil. <laughs> Android Lust says, don't have a Twitter. I don't know why I don't have one yet. I didn't have one for, I, I opened my Twitter account in 2016. And that was because I knew I was streaming in 2017 onwards. So I've been a streamer since about 2017. So a couple of years. Uh, and I only opened my Twitter account because I was going to be a streamer. I don't, I don't get into, uh, I don't have Facebook and I won't have Facebook because they spy on you. Um, I do have Twitter, but mainly because it's a way for me to um, to let you guys know if I can't stream for any reason. Uh, but we also have the Discord server now too, so I, I always post in Discord as well if I can't stream for some reason or if I'm on holidays or anything like that. Uh, but not everyone wants to join Discord, which is fair enough. I get that. And that's why we have the Twitter. The Twitter. Just like the Facebook. You notice the old people, they say the instead of just Twitter, the Twitter, the Facebook. Really quite funny. All those oldies. Not that there's anything wrong with being old. And the last one here is ambient occlusion. And we should have our texture back again now. There we go. Now again, uh, I am going to be over painting these textures in Mari, particularly these two rings here. They, they'll, they'll really benefit from an overpaint. 
Um, I was going to go through and rename all these textures, but it's really boring for you guys to watch. So we're just going to jump straight back into doing some texturing work in Substance Painter, I think. Because why not? It's more interesting to look at. More fun. Um, okay, so what we need to do is there's a couple of things inside of the uh, terrace here I'm going to need to texture up. So let me just zoom in here. Uh, there's this ring that goes around the outside and there's also these um, these supports that go along the columns. Sniper Girl, thank you for the subscription. You are awesome, Sniper Girl. I just noticed that there. So thank you very much, Sniper Girl, for the sub. I do appreciate it, guys, when you sub to me. So you're awesome. Thanks, Sniper Girl. How long have you been subbed for now, Sniper Girl? It must be a while. It must be a good while. Well, you're on the gold star, the gold badge, I should say. So you've been over a year now. Over a year, wow. Where does the time go? It's very good of you, Sniper Girl. I do appreciate it. Sniper Echo says, adding uh, a jest to the list. I'm not sure what that is. Sniper Echo says, this Twitch ban appeal will take a lot of work. Twitch ban appeal. What, what, what Twitch ban appeal are you talking about, Sniper Echo? Uh, Crites TV says to Android Lust, do it. It's a great way to meet new like-minded people. What are we talking about? Yeah, actually, I, I don't dissuade people from having a Twitter account. I think it's a good thing to have as well. I'm just going to isolate this piece, make sure we did a, uh, a chamfer on the edges. We did, I remember. There we go. That's good. Uh, let's rename this though so that uh, we are nice and organized. We're going to call this one um, in a, in a, in a, in a, what am I going to call it? In a, in a ring. That'll do. In a ring. Uh, uh, so it says 15 months. Who's 15 months? Are we talking about Sniper Girl? No, she's, she's been subscribed for 15 months. I can't actually get up. A list on my screen because I'm using Streamlabs chatbot, not the Twitch chat, and it doesn't uh, give me the option to click and tell me how long they've been subbed for. Either way, it's awesome. Uh, Kreitz TV says so talking about the Twitter. The Twitter. Smithbury says uh, I'm a snob and ridicule people for using Twitter because I'm better than them. Well, <laughs> you're one of the few that doesn't use Twitter in this day and age, Smithbury Barbecue. Sniper Echo says. Uh, Ageism, oh ageism, I guess is a better way of putting that to ageism, yes. We don't want to be ageist, we're not ageist, we're, we're, com we're, you know, everybody is equal, everybody is cool, we don't, we don't discriminate against age, race, sex, anything like that. Uh, and if, if, so we're open and inclusive of everybody. So again, I'm just going to mention it a couple of times because uh, I did say it at the beginning of the stream and I'm just worried that some people might not have caught it. We should be okay to um, to see the full stream through today, but I do have to go into hospital to pick up a friend of mine who's having um, some tests done at the hospital and they're going to be doping him up so he can't come home on his own. So I've got to go into the hospital and pick him up and take him home. Uh, so if I have to cut the stream at any stage, that's because my phone will ring and that'll be them telling me, the hospital telling me I need to go and pick him up. But I think we should be able to get through the stream uh, without me having to do that. It, it always takes hours when you go to the hospital to have tests done. So. Crouch TV says to Smurfberry, too cool for the Twitter. <laughs> Smurfberry is too cool for everything, isn't it? Aren't you Smurfberry? Sniper Echo says, does he know uh, you're, going, you're going picking him up? in his dope state. Well, I, I did speak to him before he went into the hospital this morning. I did remind him. Um, the hospital are the first people calling me though, not him. So he's given the hospital my mobile number and my name. After the uh, tests are done and he's all doped up and feeling a bit, a bit happy, the hospital will call me and tell me that he's ready to be picked up and then I'll go and pick him up. So we're not relying on him in his doped up state to tell me, the hospital will tell me. 
uh, Andrew Doss says we only discriminate against DAS three D users. Oh, they don't knock the DAS people. I mean, you know, they do. They they provide a service as well. You know, creating crappy models, but hey, they provide a service using a crappy program. But hey, it's it's a program. I wouldn't use DAS. I've never used DAS. But again, people sell on the DAS stuff. They make a decent living from that as well. I imagine making all those big boob character girls that they sell on DAS. Uh, Sniper Echo says, and is there a van involved? No, there's no van involved. Uh, no, I'll be getting a taxi. Because <laughs> um, if I have to control him while he's all doped up, I need someone to be driving. It'll be a taxi. Yes, sir. Or an Uber. <laughs> Sniper Echo says, I remember the good old days. No ZBrush user was seen here. I know, now we're full of ZBrush users. Well, I did use ZBrush. You saw me using it a couple of weeks ago or last week to do the stairs, so... You won't be seeing me in that program for a while again, not until I need to. Uh, Smurfberry says, people still pay for that. I have a writer friend who bought stock art of a character model to use for the base of a cover for a novel. Pretty sure it was a Daz model, probably that is used quite a bit for that sort of thing. Um, it's actually interesting you, you talk about that because there is an article on my webpage where I did a story for, um, for the authors and writers because people like to buy my stuff to use for book covers as well which is interesting i just thought i'd mention it because of you mentioning that so yeah i did i did an interview with the authors and writers um to about my work uh Smurfery says sent it over to his cover art guy who added butterfly wings and other visual effects to it and it turned out pretty well um, yeah again these models that you can buy on daz i'm not saying they're bad they're not bad uh, they all tend to be a bit the same, though. They're all fairies, though. <laughs> all they're really scantily clad women with really big breasts. That's what I found with Dad's models generally. Anyway, uh, I'm using a plugin here to send the models between 3D Studio Max and Substance Painter. It's a plugin you can download for free from Algorithmic's website under the, in the forum. Uh, they also have plugins, I believe, for Maya and Blender, I think. They could have Cinema 4D as well, I'm not completely sure, don't quote me on that. Uh, but this is the one for Max. So I'm just going to send this selection over to Substance Painter now. It's good because it, I don't have to export and re-import the model, it sets up the project for me automatically, imports the model and it's ready to go. As you can see. Let us just make sure that our substances are a bit larger so we can see them. Galen, it's good to see you, Galen. How are you, buddy? Very cookie cutter. I think Galen's talking about the dad stuff. Yep. <laughs> but sometimes people just need the cookie cutter stuff. Like Smurfberry says, if maybe if they're doing a book cover or something, they can use it for that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to bake out the curvature maps and all that sort of goodness. I'm going to use the high poly as the low poly. And I'm going to bake them out in a 2K resolution. Yeah, Daz models. Yep, I thought that's what you were talking about, Galen. Uh, Andrew Lust says, hey, Galen. Good to see you, Galen. Hope you're well. Uh, okay, so we've baked out the normal, the world space, the ID, the ambient occlusion, the curvature, the position, and the thickness maps. Good. Now let's find something to place along this inner ring. Uh, now, I want something a little bit different from what we've been using on the outside of the terrace. I'm just going to close that. We can unhide that. Um, so I don't want to cement, I want something a little bit more interesting, maybe a little bit, just having a little bit more colour in it on the inside here, so uh, to better match the actual um, dome, because the dome has got a bit of colour in it as well. So I'm not going to make them red, but we'll, we'll see what we've got here to play with inside of Substance Painter. Okay, we don't want chestnut, it can't be a wood. I'm just curious as what this one looks like. We, anything with a line on it we can't really use because we're using a circular piece. It won't really map properly. I was just curious. We can remove that. I'm going to remove this layer as well. It's just a, an empty layer that's created when you first create a project in Substance Painter. And Galen says, doing, uh, doing okay. Woke up at 2 a.m. and been taking power naps all day. That's the way to do it. We were talking about this yesterday about how I, I, I'm the same. I like to work in the early hours of the morning uh, that, because it's nice and quiet. 
like there's no car noises no no noises outside at all it's completely completely silent and uh, i really like that so and then you've got a nap during the day because you've been working through the early hours of the morning so i get that as well you don't want carpet uh, we don't want ceramic here and I see that Nightbot is spamming my links as usual. Uh, Galen says it wasn't by choice, but insomnia is a pain. Oh yeah, there's nothing worse than not being able to go to sleep. That is the worst. I was a bit like that last night actually. I went to bed about, um, I guess about one o'clock in the morning, I think it was. Generally I work until about midnight sort of thing one and then go to bed and get up again about 6.30 uh, but I couldn't sleep last night I was tossing and turning for a good hour before I could actually fall asleep and they say when you when you get into that sort of state you should get up don't lay in bed and keep tossing and turning because it makes it worse so you get up maybe read a book have a maybe a glass of warm milk or something uh, and then wait till you feel tired and then go back to bed but of course I didn't do that, I just lay there tossing and turning for an hour. Eventually I fell asleep though, so. This has lines in it too. I'm just going to see if there is any options in the actual texture here for us to turn the lines off. I don't think there is. No, unfortunately there's not, so we can't use it. Uh, Crutch TV says to Galen, I feel you. Yep, I feel you too. Let's uh, have a look at this one. I want to see if there's an option for me to change the color. Some damage. Okay, we can actually turn the lines off on this one, so that's good. Let's uh, increase the scaling a bit. It's too more. I'm actually going to turn off the height, the normal and the roughness on this underlying layer because I don't want to see the brickwork. Because it's actually a texture that has um, that has bricks underneath of it. I'm just trying to see if I can bring them in. I can't, but that's okay. I don't want to use them anyway. I might see. Hmm. I'm actually going to leave the brick, uh, the normal, the normal and the roughness and the height turned on. Oh, will I? I'll turn the height information off. I don't want that. Um, let's see if we can change the color a little bit. I think I want to bring it into a bit more of a. Uh, Bit more of a mustardy colour, I think. Not quite that much. Just a little bit of a yellow tint to it. Just, just a little. Sniper Echo says, Two weeks ago I couldn't sleep at all, so I got up and over the course of the week I rebuilt an engine. Smurfberry Barbecue is now... Oh, thank you for the host, Smurfberry Barbecue. <laughs> Thanks for the host. I do appreciate it, Smurfberry. Uh, so you got up and you... Um, Sniper Echo, and the course of the week you rebuilt an engine. Wow. Is this uh, a car engine or a software engine? I'm assuming maybe you mean a car engine. You're better off than I am. I couldn't. That, I couldn't do that. I know nothing about cars, nothing at all. I couldn't rebuild an engine to save my life. Okay, that could be okay for an underlying texture. Let's see what else we've got here to work with. I should get some more stony, concrete type uh, tech, uh, substances. I don't have, seem to have a lot of them. I mean, I have a lot of substances, but not a lot of um, stony type ones. I've got a lot of metals. A car engine, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm impressed you can rebuild a car engine. I, I couldn't, I wouldn't even know 
what one looks like. I, I know what an engine looks like, but yeah, I could not do. I, I couldn't change a spark plug. I couldn't do anything like that. Not even something simple like that. Uh, Crouch TV says to Sniper, damn son. Sniper Rico says, boredom gets to me. Well, you should be doing 3D stuff then, Sniper Rico. If you're bored, there's no excuse. Do 3D. There are times when I don't want to do 3D as well. So, I, you know, I, I do get the fact that you guys don't want to do 3D 24-7. Uh, because I'm the same way. There, there are times where I don't want to do it, but I have to because I've got a, a deadline for the studio or something. That's why I've been working over the weekends. I don't have a choice. They make me. No, they don't make me. I enjoy what I do. Uh, let's just look at the scaling here a little bit. No, I, don't, I can't pull it in because of that pattern that's in the texture. That doesn't mean we can't use it though, uh, using a smart material, a smart mask. Uh, so we'll look at that in a minute. I'm just going to see, play around with the luminosity a little bit, maybe pull it up a tiny bit. We do have a, sh a hue shift here, so we can change the color if we want. I might just pull in a little bit of green. Uh, Crosswind, it's good to see you, Crosswind. Uh, Crosswind says, what happens when 3D bores you? <laughs> what happens when 3D bores you? Switch to 2D for a while. Well, that's an option. Yeah, you can do some 2D painting. That's always a good thing to do. I'm just pulling back on the normal intensity a little bit. Uh, I'm also just pulling back a little bit on the roughness. The ambient occlusion is not going to do much for us because it's uh, most of it's just a flat plane. So the height range and position will probably be okay. Let's um, look at a smart mask though. Though, so let's have a look at uh, let's 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 look at the surface wall on one. Let's, Play around with this one. We'll start with the balance. We might pull up on the contrast so we can see it a little bit better. <laughs> Sniper says, well, honestly, I thought learn some ZBrush sculpting, but I slayed that beast real quick and went for the easier option. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. I'm just going to pull this in a little bit so we have a bit of coverage. So it looks like some of this plaster has worn off of the cement ring. Uh, again, the ambient occlusion. I might just pull up a little on that one. The curvature. Mm -hmm. World space normal. No, we'll leave that pulled down. Position gradient. No, again, we'll leave that one pull down. Um, I might just go back to the texture and this is the underlying texture. I'm just going to pull up again a little bit so we get we can see the stucco effect a little bit better on top of the underlying texture. Uh, let's not stop there. Let's go back to our textures and see what else we can do. Why stop there? More is better, isn't that what they say? No, we can't really get away with the gravel. Uh, Snuffy Girl says zebra sculpting is good to know. <laughs> Crouch TV says uh, to cross when the 40 underwater chess might be, might interest you. Oh, Snuffy Girl says no when uh, texturing more is better. Sniper says my path was chosen for me. Oh uh, yeah, no, we can't really use these gravels, unfortunately. We could get away with using like a granite. Uh, I just don't know if I want to go down that path with this. I don't know if I want to make it that grand that we that the the, the inner ring would be a granite. 
we might come back to it. We might come back to the granite. It's easy to try and see if it works, and if it doesn't, we can remove it just as easily. So, the beauty of Substance Painter. I'm just going to have a look through and see if there's anything else here that might be cool. Can't use linen. We could use a marble. Again, it may it's going to make it a little bit grander than I actually had intended if we use a marble. We do have a few different types of marble though. No, we can't use a metal. Smurfer is asking, does ZBrush even come in physical boxes? I don't know if it does either. I don't know if it comes physically at all. Again, it, it might, I don't know. Generally software now is all distributed electronically, like games most of the time. You don't buy physical games anymore, you are. You download them from Steam or from, even if you've got a console, you download them that way. Although you can buy console discs, I guess. Who uses discs anymore? Come on, it's 2019. No one uses physical media anymore. It's all digital. Download direct. Uh, Crites TV says to snuck a Echo drawing tablet as shield, pen, as sword. That's right. The pen is your sword. Uh, snuck a Echo says someone needs an anim to animate something like that. Crites TV. And Crites TV says to snuck a, that would be pretty funny. It would be. It would be very funny. Why is my social media gone on? Oh, almost because the error spot is just, just posted in Discord on my social media so that um, I've gone live. That error spot is a bit slack. A bit slow off the mark there. I've been live for quite a while now. Uh, we will. I'm, I probably am going to use one of these mud textures, but as the last texture, do we put some dirt on it? So I don't want that just yet. Um, can't use an iron. We don't want lava. I'm curious. Um, we do have these two painted textures. We've got like a painted rust and a painted steel. Just because they're, they're, they're painted steel and rust doesn't mean we couldn't use them for like a stone. Now the same with the plastic ones here. Even though they're plastic, we can always change the uh, the attributes to make them look more like uh, paint if we need to. Particularly with a smart mask, we can always um, make it look more interesting with a smart mask. I don't think I have an uptime command, actually, Sniper Girl. I don't think I programmed one in, or did I? <laughs> no, I don't think there is an uptime. I haven't put it into a Nightbot. But I can tell you, because I can see the clock, I've been streaming for exactly 50 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, I can add an uptime. If you, you're the first person to ever use an uptime command in my chat, Sniper Girl. <laughs> Um, but I could certainly add it. It should be easy for you guys to work out. I always stream at the same time every day. 5 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. is when I start. Steel. We don't want steel. We don't want stone. Uh... We don't want wood. Let's go back up here and look at um, I just want to see what this painted rust looks like. I'm just going to increase the scaling a little bit, the tiling I should say a little bit. Not as nice of a texture as I thought it would be. Again, I want to see if I can change the colour. Let's 
pull back a bit on the saturation, pull up a bit on the luminosity. Yeah, it's not a great texture. Let's, let's find something better. Let's see if we can pull some marble in, maybe. Um, we have a few different marbles here we can choose from. Let's have a look at this greyish marble. I'm just going to turn these other ones off, underlying it, so I can just concentrate on the marble texture itself. Just going to pull up a little bit on the contrast. Let us see what smart masks we can throw down. Uh, let us go with... Um, let's try... Let's try this Concrete Edges one. going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little bit more clearly along the edges here. Well, this one has two, two masks. Let's go to the bottom one first. You can see what this that's doing. It's sort of pulling it in if I don't go too high along the edges here. So just helping to dirty up the edges. It's It actually has a grunge amount as well that we could pull in, but I don't want to pull in too much here. Maybe the occlusion's full, curvature. Yeah, we want that pretty high. Uh, the top down gradient. Nope. World space normal. It's not really making much change. We have a scratches. We no, we're going to pull back on the scratches. And we have a scatter. I'll pull back on the scatter as well. Let's look at the up, uh, the top grunge mask. That should be fine. Uh, I'm also just going to play around here with the mixing instead of doing a normal. We'll see what the other ones look like. Pass through. Let's try and multiply. I think the multiply is better. It adds a bit more dirt to the texture. Again, this may be one that I'll end up overpainting inside of Mari once we've textured up a few more bits and pieces. Um, now let's throw down a dirt material. And for that I'm going to use one of the muds. So I can find one of the muds. Let's go with this one. We actually have a mortar as well. Mortar could be interesting. Let's try the mortar, and if we don't like it, we can always change it. Um, again, let's just play with the scale here a little bit. going to change the color. We are going to go back to uh, Smart Masks and I'm going to choose... What am I going to choose? I'm going to choose... So I'm going to try this moss from the top. I just want to see what I can... what that's going to give me. So we can see it off and on here. Let's play around with the values a little bit. It 
So I'm going to pull in a little bit of this dirt colour. Most of this is actually going to be hidden within the uh, terrace itself. We're really only going to be seeing the inner ring and a little bit of the outer ring uh, because it sits under the dome. Uh, we have a grunge value here. We can pull up a little bit on that. Uh, let's play with the curvature a little bit. World space normal. Again, I'm going to pull back on the scratches. I don't really want them in there. And then we have the scatter. Smurfberry says, for half a second there, I thought uh, Mambo number five was starting to play. And he's talking about the music. I actually can't hear the music. <laughs> Only you guys can hear it. Because uh, if I could hear it, then I get feedback through my mic. I'd have to wear headphones and I get hot ears. So I don't like wearing headphones like a lot of streamers do. My ears get hot. No, uh, yeah, the world space normal is not really doing a lot. Scratches we don't want. Scatter we don't want. So just just add a little bit of dirt here and there. I'm just going to look at that scatter. I think it was scatter around here. Just going to pull back on that a little bit. What is that? Try planar blending. I'm actually going to turn Triplanar on because I've noticed, uh, I don't know if you can see it on stream here, but you see this? This is actually uh, an artifact from the scattering uh, slider. Uh, but if we turn Triplanar blending on, that gets rid of that pattern. That should probably do for what we need, I think. I don't think we need to go too, too more uh, nuts. I'm just going to um, rename this, what's it called? <laughs> Inner Ring. Yeah, so let's just rename it Inner Ring. Do a save in case we need to come back at some stage in the future, but let's export our textures. In a ring, that's good. Uh, again, I'm going to I'm going to export this as a 4K texture because I do want to do some overpainting in Mari, so I want a good texture resolution. Uh, let's just do an export now. There's only one texture on it. One UV map, I should say. Triplanar is like magic. Crutch TV says it is. You got to love the triplanar mapping. Uh, Mari has triplanar as well, so. Most of the good painting and software has triplanar mapping now. Mari also, the new version of Mari 4.5 was released about a few weeks ago. I have installed it. I haven't had a chance to play with it really yet though. Uh, it has a lot of cool, interesting new stuff in it as well, particularly regarding materials. So we will all be checking it out for the first time when I jump into Mari because uh, I haven't even looked at it yet. <laughs> okay, uh, we've done that. We've done a save, didn't we? Let's close that down. Let's jump into uh, Max and open up the material editor. Now uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just throw down a standard material to remind me what my DirectX shader will be because I can't see it when I make a DirectX shader. It doesn't really show me the texture. So me doing it this way just reminds me what the texture is that the DirectX shader is related to. Uh, let us find this one, which will be in a ring, that one there. And I'm just going to pull in the, uh, the color map to remind me what it is. So, okay, now we need to create a DirectX shader. So first thing we do is throw down a standard shader, right click, change material type, 
to DirectX because we want to see it exactly as it looks inside of our algorithmic painter. We can discard the old material and we can delete that. We're only interested in this. And we can actually probably pipe that into there. Ah, oh, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to redo that. I'm just going to do that one more time. Change the map type to DirectX. Discard the old material. Okay, let's set up our shader. First thing we're going to do is we're going to... This is not correct. What is going on here? Okay, I know what's going on. I need to change it from HLSL to interactive. That's better. Now let's bring the normal map in. Uh, in a ring, this one, making sure to change our override to one gamma. Let's bring in the color map, which is this one. Override the gamma. Now the metallic map. And the roughness map. And finally the ambient occlusion. Uh, let's turn them on. So we'll be using the normal map. We're using the color map, metallic, roughness, and ambient occlusion. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, we have our ring selected, so let's assign that material. Uh, and I also want to make sure I name that material so we don't lose ourselves. And there we go. Let us move now to the um, the other reason I wanted to add a bit of yellow into that texture we were just working on in substance is because the bottom of the dome here, I don't know if you can see it, it's like a sandstone, so it has some yellow in it. I wanted to pick up on that. Uh, it's the same thing I want to do here with these, um, these supports. So again, I'm just going to go into isolation mode here. It's called inner supports. That's good. Let's send that over to Substance Painter. good. The first thing we want to do is we want to bake out the curvature and uh, all that goodness. So use the low poly as the high poly and uh, again I'm going to bake out a 2K. It doesn't really matter so much the resolution of the bake out here because I'm not saving any of these maps. If I was saving them out then the resolution would be much more important. So 2K is like a good middle ground. Alrighty, now uh, again, I've UV, UV, UV mapped all of these separately. I could UV map one and copy that UV across to all of these other ones. Um, but then we're, we're going to notice if we have a unique looking texture on this one, you're going to notice it's being reused on all of them. So to, to fix that, what I've done is UV map them all together as one UV map. And I'm not copying the same UVs around. Sometimes you can get away with doing that, but with something like this where they're all so close to each other, you're going to notice if a texture starts repeating. Okay, what are we doing? What are we doing? Let us make this larger so I can see them. And so you can see them. Uh, let's start with... See if we can use this one. 
I'm just going to move around to this side because this is the side we're going to be seeing. This side's up against the column. Well, let's play with our scaling a little bit. That's no, too much. parameters do we have here? We can't really do much with the brick. Uh, we can certainly change the offset though, so let's have a look at the offset. It's going to pull back here a bit. Uh, remember too, we're, this is just going to be a base colour. We're going to be overpainting it like we did with the uh, other asset in two seconds. So I'm just trying to decide as a base colour if this will work or not. It probably will. Ideally, I wouldn't really want to see any brickwork, but it does. It makes sense there could be brickwork there. Let's find something else to put over the top of it. Uh, and again, this may be an asset that I do a bit of overpainting in Mari with. I won't make that decision until all the pieces are textured up and then I can choose which pieces I want to highlight a bit more by overpainting in Mari. And which ones might need some colour correction as well in Photoshop of the texture because we have to make sure everything blends together nicely. And we can't really do that until everything is pretty much textured up and then we can make some adjustments. Um, I'm going to throw this ground, now this is called ground, so it's meant to be placed on the ground, but uh, I want to see what it's going to look like on this. Okay, we did this with the other piece, it's actually a ground texture, so it has um, stones and things in it, but we can actually... Um, Thought we could hide offset. We can actually turn the stones off. They call it rocks. So we can remove the rocks. Because I want to use it more like a mossy texture. Uh, white stains. Let's pull back a bit on that. Don't really want to change the offset. We can pull back on the amount of moss a little bit. That's fine, but I think it might benefit from a smart mask as well. So let's have a look at that. Uh, let's try let's try this moss from the top. And you can see what that's done is it's moved the moss just to the top of the um, of the objects and not along the bottom. Change the grunge amount. And play with the curvature a little bit. So yeah, if I turn it off, you can, and, and we look at this one here. Uh, where, where is my curvature? Um, one, one, which one is it? This one, and I pull up on it, it starts to, to appear from the top and works its way down. Uh, we could certainly do an invert on that though, if we wanted the moss from the bottom and working its way up. Uh, but I don't, I think I liked it the way it was. So I want moss at the top and less at the bottom. Scratches, no I don't want scratches. And the scatter. No, let's pull back on the scatter. So we have some moss growing along the top. Let's see what else we might be able to add. Uh, we probably won't go too nuts with too many layers here. Um, we might just throw a dirt on it, I think. 
Instead of using the mortar wall like we did with the last one, we might use this mud one. No problem, Crite TV. Thanks for being here and watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again soon. I'm live every Monday, Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific in the US. Uh, so, hopefully, I will see you again. You, good luck with your grocery shopping, Crite. No problem. Thank you. I'm glad you like the stream. Later. Have a good weekend, Crites, too. Um, let us throw down this dirt, 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 mud. Just gonna throw it down on top. Let's play with the scale a little bit. I'm gonna turn off the hide information here as well, because I don't want that. See ya. See ya, Crites. Thanks for being here. Hopefully I'll see you again soon. I'm just pulling up here on the tiling. Um, I also want to... Uh, I'm pulling back on the luminosity. I want it to be a little bit darker. Not too dark though. Let us also... What's in the advanced? It's the colour and cracks, okay. Yeah, no, we don't really want any cracks. Back to my pull back up on the luminosity. I might just darken up the actual color itself a little bit. That's better. Uh, let's go with the smart mask, and for this one, I think. I think. Edges, edges. Let's try this cavity rust one. I'm going to zoom in a bit here so we can get a better look. Uh, let's look at the balance here. Okay, see what it's doing. I did a bake out good. I don't know if this smart mask is going to work for what we want actually. It's not really behaving the way I want it to. Uh, so I'm going to... I did not want to do that. Okay, let's go back again to the materials. I accidentally deleted my layer and I can't undo it, so... Let's throw that back down again. Change our scaling, turn off height, normal and height, and roughness. Change our color again a little bit. Back to our smart masks and let's try um, some of these work better than others depending on the object. Let us try. They do have like specific dirt masks here. That's not really what I want though. I might try... Uh, I might try soft dirt. Okay, we have a dirt level. I'm going to pull it all the way up initially, just so I, it, it, I can more easily see what it's doing. Because if it's too low like this, it's really hard for me to see exactly what it's doing. Pull up on the contrast, turn triplanar on. Grunge scale doesn't seem to have a lot of, uh, make a lot of difference here. Again, it's, it's not really doing a lot, unfortunately. I don't know why. 
it's the mask. The mask is not um, really making much of a change to the actual object. I'm just making sure we've baked out what we need and we have, so that's all good. Um, my apologies here, I'm just getting a notification on my firewall. My backup program wanted to get through my firewall and it blocked it, so I've just allowed it. Yeah, see it's not, it's giving us dirt, but it's sort of like doing an overall dirt. Maybe if we pull back a bit on the grunge, that might give us a bit more control. What I might actually do too is I might just change the colour a little bit. I might make it a little bit darker. It's a bit better because I wanted it to look like dirt is building up in these creases here, these crevices. That's the whole point of me putting the grunge, the dirt map on top of it. Again, I'm just going to pull out so I can get a better overall look. That might work for what we want. We can always do any any color correction in Photoshop to the texture when we come to blend everything together properly. Let's do a save here. Let me um, copy the name of the asset. I've noticed this here. Sometimes when you jump between uh, Substance Painter and Max, there's like a half second delay. What I really should be doing is closing down and opening up like I am here instead of having both of them open in the background. It might be a better way to go. So inner supports is what we're calling it. Let's export the textures again. I'm gonna I'm gonna do 4K all the way. It already is named correctly, so let's export. And I can have a copy. Because I need the coffee. Smurfberry Barbecue says only four. <laughs> I can go up. I think you can do eight now in Substance Painter, can't you? I could go to eight. I could go to eight. Uh, Snappy Girl says Photoshop is the devil. No, Photoshop is wonderful. I love Photoshop. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have Photoshop. Trust me. I use it constantly. I need it for everything. For work, for video editing, I need it for everything. But there are good alternatives now if you don't want to give money to um to Adobe, which I understand. Uh, Smurfberry says, yeah, it'll go up to eight. Yeah, I thought it went up to eight. Smurfberry says, yeah, it needs 20. <laughs> That's right. We need 20K textures because we're all doing film work and we want that we want those high-res textures. Um, let's create the shader. We'll just bring in the texture map to remind me what it is. It's not going to be the inner ring, it's going to be the inner supports. Okay, let's create the DirectX shader now. Um, Smokebury says one of these days I may try out Critter or SAI or something. I'm not familiar with either of them. Sniper Girl says honestly I don't use Photoshop that much. Uh, Smokebury says but today is not that day. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm not familiar with either of those two programs you just mentioned though. But I use Photoshop and I'm happy with Photoshop so <laughs> I don't want to go looking for an alternative at the moment. Uh, let's bring in the normal map. 
making sure we override our gamma. And the color map. And the metallic map. The roughness map. And finally the ambient occlusion. Uh, Snappy Girl says, how high res can reality capture go? Uh, I know the default is 16K. You know, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I've never really looked. <laughs> I generally stick to 8K if I'm exporting out of reality capture. Um, I'm not sure what the limit is though. I don't know if there is a limit. I don't think there's a limit in context capture. But generally 8K is good enough for what I need to do. Um, sometimes multiple 8Ks on a per object if, if need be. So even if the software doesn't go up to the resolution you need, you can get it to actually break your texture up into chunks. So 4K here, 4K for this half, 4K for this half of the same model, 4K for the bottom, you know what I mean? You can get around it that way too. But I'm not sure. I'll have to check. <laughs> um, Smoopery says, I like Photoshop in so far as it... It's what I know how to use, and lots of people use it, so there's lots of tutorials. It's used in um, design constant, pretty much exclusively. Whether you're doing graphic design or even 3D stuff, uh, they all use Photoshop. So it's a good program to learn because it can be, it can take a while to actually learn it as well. It's quite, it's quite a full-on program, Photoshop. You can do a lot of different things with that software. There we go. Uh, let us assign the shader so we can see what it looks like. I may, um, I may just jump, well, I was going to say I may jump back and pull back a bit on the height information. Uh, it might be okay. And you see the good thing about us using, uh, instead of reusing the same UV map, we don't have the texture of repeating, it's unique on each piece. Which is good. I think the height might be okay. I, I was concerned it might be a little bit high, but I think it'll be all right. Um, but again, we can always reload that substance um, save and, and make any changes if we find it is too high once we start doing some renders. Let us uh, hide isolation mode and have a look at our handiwork. I'm just going to select that up there so it's easier for me to see. I'm just going to, oh I see, I, I thought there was a gap there but it's actually the underside of that uh, ledge that I'm seeing. I, I, from a distance it looked like a gap here, but it's not, so that's okay. Mercury says, I don't think I actually like Photoshop. Well, I do like Photoshop, I have to say. I think Adobe have done a good job with Photoshop. Snappy Girl says, normally just go default export, mostly because their UVs aren't that good. What are we talking about? Normally just go default export. Mostly, yeah, yeah, well, that's true too. Uh, a lot of the times, you saw me do it with this photogrammetry here. A good example was the um, was this um, fountain this urn fountain thing it's an urn but i'm turning it into a fountain uh, the uv layout wasn't great so we re uv'd it and we rebaked the texture out inside of max uh, so yeah a lot of times you won't get a great bake out from photogrammetry the, the way it lay, the photogrammetry software lays out its uvs isn't always great sometimes it's okay sometimes though you need to rebake it and that's what we did oh 
for that, we re-baked re the texture map um, once we'd re-UV'd it to make it a little bit better. So that's true. And it depends on the software too that does the bake out. Uh, Snappy Girl says UVs are the manhole cover from Reality Capture. Oh, you tried Reality Capture. Cool. Did you like Reality Capture? Because I know you were using uh, Meta, Meta, Meta Scan, Meta Shape. I can't remember what they're calling it now. The one from Aggie Soft, Aggie Soft. Um, I, I like Reality Capture because it's really fast. It uses the GPU uh, to do the actual calculations, so it's mega, mega fast. That's what I really like about Reality Capture. Uh, but the studio uses Bentley Context Capture, which is good software, but man, is it expensive. There's no way I'd pay that to buy. Well, I couldn't afford to spend 10 grand on software for, for photogrammetry. The studio can, but I can't. Reality Capture is good. But MetaShape, MetaScan, that's good too. Uh, Andrew Lust says, Honestly, I wish my city had structures like what you're making. What city are you making, Andrew Lust? Have you showed any pictures of your city? If you don't want to yet, that's cool. I'm just curious. Um, and again, it depends on like what you're targeting as far as the detail goes for your models for your city. Oh, you mean the city you live in? Oh, I, <laughs> I thought you were modeling a city, Android Love. Oh, the city you live in. Well, this doesn't exist, of course. This is my, my design using bits of photogrammetry from other things. Uh, so this doesn't exist either. I wish I, not that we don't have some nice terraces and stuff in Melbourne. Some we do, but it's not like places like Europe where they've got beautiful old architecture. Because Australia is just not old enough as a country to have that really beautiful architecture, like like you find in um, in France or in Ireland or in England or in Italy, unfortunately. Sniper Girl says, yeah, uh, way better, faster. Can actually do other things while it's baking. Metashape is hard on my PC and takes forever. <laughs> yeah, you can do other things when you use Reality Capture because it uses the GPU more than the CPU, so you can do other stuff while Reality Capture is working out your model for you. And it's so super, super fast compared to normal uh, capture software because it is using the GPU, uh, but you do need an NVIDIA GPU to use it because I believe it uses CUDA. Android Lust says, I'm making a house currently, but I can't show it to you all. That's okay. That's okay. As long as you're making something, as long as you're doing some 3D work, I'm happy. Even if you can't show it. Uh, Sniper Girl says to Android Lust, kind of know the feeling where I live uh, is dull and boring. Make the best of it. Yeah, well, you know. Sorry, my firewall was going off again. I'm just trying to work out what it's complaining about now. Windows. Um, Windows malicious software tool, you know, the thing that runs in the background to check you don't have viruses and stuff. Um, Sniper says, oh, it's not, not talking to me, so I won't read it out. <laughs> what are we talking about here? What temp post? Sniper Echo. You're looking at making a trip to Chicago. You were mentioning that in um, in the Discord server there. You were saying how you wanted to do the rock or something that's out from the uh, software company that you had an interview with. Which could be cool. I'm not discouraging you. Um, don't 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 become a stalker though. Don't 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 annoy them. That, that's my point. Don't 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 email them too much or anything. But it could be a good way to, like you said, to show your enthusiasm for their company by actually <laughs> traveling to where their headquarters are and making uh, and, and uh, turning that rock into a 3D model, for sure. Android Lust says to Sniper Girl, your city has less than 10,000 people, right? Uh, I figure your city is... <laughs> Sniper Girl says to Sniper Echo, make temp posts when I'm showing stuff on streams I watch. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but anyway. I don't know what these temp posts are. You did hear me thank you too for the resub, didn't you, Sniper Girl? I just wanted to make sure. I do appreciate the subscription. Thanks, Sniper Girl, because you've been subbed for so long. You're my second longest subscriber. Smurfery says, My city has a rich history of architecture and events. Well, I'm incredibly jealous, Smurfery Barbecue, and don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> 
I wish, I wish this country did too. I'm so jealous of you guys in Europe. I really am. You've got beautiful architecture. I would, you know, the sort of you can see the sort of stuff I like to make. Um, so the architecture in Europe and, and around there, even the United States, has some beautiful architecture as well. Uh, I'm incredibly, incredibly jealous. <laughs> I would go nuts with the photogrammetry, nuts. Particularly if I was in places like England with all those beautiful old castles and old mansions, I would go nuts. Uh, I have actually had, I traveled to England before and I have photographed some, some of those old mansions, but I'd like to go back and do more because that was quite a while ago. Uh, Sniper Girl says, I don't, haven't emailed them in ages. Be oh, well, good. I figure it would be a fun thing to do. Uh, and a good moment, a memento to give them. No, that's fine. That's fine. I, I, I fully support that. I think it's a great idea. I don't know how far, how long it's going to take you to get to Chicago. I don't know how close that is for you and whether is it going to be worthwhile doing that. Only you can judge. Um, and I think it's a, it, it's a nice thing to do and it will make them remember you for sure. But my point was just don't, don't, don't stalk them. <laughs> don't annoy them. But if you don't, haven't been emailing them, that's fine. I know some people, you, you, you know, you, you want a you want a job with them, so the tendency is to contact them constantly. It can be, and that can be a bad thing. You don't want to annoy them, but I'm sure you haven't been annoying them, sniper girl. Andrew Lust says some places in the United States, uh, some of them they have some nice architecture in the US. Uh, sniper girl says, "Oh my God, the same." If I was in England or anywhere in Europe, I'd go crazy with pictures. I certainly would too. I think I, I would go nuts. I would go nuts. I really, really, really would. I'm just looking through here to make sure the colour matches correctly. It looks all right. We got a good match up. Uh, I think first thing we should do here is we should do a quick save because we haven't saved in a while. So let's just do that and I can have a copy while it's doing it. Uh, Sniper Girl says it takes about three hours just to get there via train. We'll do a lot of other photogrammetry projects while in the city. Well, if you're going to make you know use of it by doing other photogrammetry pictures, then that's probably okay. Three hours though each way is a long time. It's six hours in travelling time there and back. But hey, it, 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 it can be nice just to get out and about and do that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Just, just as a fun day out. I know it sounds weird. You're going out a fun day out taking photos, but of photogrammetry. But it's a fun day out for me. Like when I took the photos for this model we're working on in the botanical gardens. I enjoyed that, even though I did get a cold. Um, it was fun. I, I like going out and taking pictures. So I, I fully support that idea. And it certainly will help you be remembered in their eyes if you're doing something that's right outside their headquarters. All right, where are we going to move to next? Um, let us see. Let us see. How much time do I have? I've got about half an hour. And let's let's look at the column, shall we? Because that... that we're sort of working from away from the top down. We'll do the columns. Um, I'm just looking for the names here. Okay, start with column one. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call this columns. Oh, uh, actually, I call it column one. Because I might make a couple of different variations on this texture because we don't want the we don't want people to notice we're reusing the same texture on all of these columns. So I might make three different types of textures. We can alternate them around and people won't notice. We'll be sneaky. Uh, so I will leave this as column one and then I'm gonna do a column two and a column three texture variation as well. That's the plan. <laughs> Thank you, El, El Columbia. El Columbia, thank you for following the channel. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome to Phil Does 3D. Uh, do remember, guys and girls, to to join the Discord server. There's a link in chat if you haven't already. 
I encourage everyone to join Discord, my Discord server. There's a very friendly group of guys and girls. If you've ever got any problems, like 3D stuff or art stuff, you can ask a question in Discord. And if they don't help you out, I will try. Because uh, I jump in and out of Discord um, when I'm not streaming. Not all the time, like Smurfberry Smartass said yesterday. He said I was never there, which is not true. <laughs> um, I do jump in and out, but I can't be on Discord all the time, I'm afraid. Because I have to work. <laughs> But I will jump in and out at different times. Let's send this over to Substance Painter. Column 1. Just going to make sure I copy that name. OBS is behaving itself. There's been no dropped frames. I'm impressed. Twitch and OBS have been, uh, been incredibly stable. Hallelujah. Uh, Sniper Girl says there's a lot of good statues in Chicago and a lot of good architecture that I could photogrammetry of, take photos of. Well, would love to hit up to Chinatown. Man, Chinatown's a good idea. Chinatown's a very good idea. Actually, we've got a Chinatown here in Melbourne. I should hit that up too. <laughs> I, have not, I don't think I've ever done any photogrammetry of um, Asian objects. No. Uh, Sniper Girl says, but yeah, their rock would be super easy to do photogrammetry of. It's uh, wide open, can do a circular base where the mulch grass line meets. It sounds like it would be cool. She's popped a Twitter link there. The Sniper Girl says, probably be 30 minutes worth of pictures max. Probably more like 10 minutes, but you know, yeah, it won't take long to do a rock. Particularly if it's nice and open, so you can get a good, a good circle of it. And, and I'm assuming it's not too high, so you can get good shots of the top. Uh, let's bake this mesh out. We're starting with 2K again, using the high poly as the low poly. I may see how we can tackle this. I may want to break the top and bottom off from the column. I'll see how I go. I may be able to use a smart mask to get around it, but we'll see. Uh, now, I want to do something interesting with this column. Uh, if we look at the original object, the photogrammet photogrammetry object, let me just open up a new version of my folder. Uh, so if we look at the picture that actually the columns were sort of based on, uh, Picks, Botanical Gardens, Temple of the Winds, and this is the actual column here. So if I open this one up, you can see that they're very plain, very boring. And that's no fun. I mean, we're, we're remaking this in a new version, so I think it would be more interesting for us to actually make the columns a bit more pretty. So that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm not just going to make them boring old cement columns. We're going to do something more interesting. Um, Android Lust says, add vines. I Normally I would, uh, but I'd have to do it. I used to have a plugin for Max called uh, Grow Ivy. You guys have seen me use it on the Baroque Terrace that I made um, at, at, when I first started streaming on Twitch. I can't use that in Max 2020 because the guy that made the plugin cracked the shits because somebody donated one cent to him. So he stopped, he stopped updating the plugin. So the last version of Max the plugin works in is Max 2019. And because I use Max 2020 now, I can't use that plugin anymore. I'm really quite annoyed about it. Um, I can't compile the plugin because I don't have access to the original code, only the original guy that made the plugin does. So there's nothing I can do about it. And there is no other plugin I'm aware of that can grow Ivy in Max. Uh, but I would like to add vines. Vines would have been a great idea. Sniper Girl says, think it came up to my tips, to my hips. <laughs> tips. Uh, so taking uh, lower angle shots would be, would be a problem. If you came up to your hips, you should be okay to still take a good, to still get a good coverage of it, I think. Uh, yeah, they are dull and boring, aren't they, Sniper Girl? Vines would be cool, I agree. Um, Android Lust says, yeah, I remember you told us that. Yeah, I, I mentioned it on the stream before when I was using it and showing you me using it. But I can't use it in Max 2020 because it hasn't been recompiled for 2020 and the guy that made it won't. He dropped it about a year and a half or two years ago. 
and he says he's not going to work on it anymore, which is annoying because it was a really good plugin, really useful. <laughs> um, there are other ways I could get around it. I could use Speed Tree, perhaps, a bit more fiddly though, but possible. I could do that, and I could bring that um, export the model from Speed Tree and bring it into Eon View to do the beauty render, or even maybe add the ivy as part of the sale of the model. I don't know. We'll look at that towards the end. Uh, Smurfberry says you need the intervention from Hacker, Hacker Man. I'm not sure who that is. Sniper Girl says if the idiots list it as free, then he should, shouldn't bitch. I agree. I agree. And if he wants to drop working on it, he should at least open source it. You know, give the, give the code to make it open source so people can pick it up and continue working on it. He doesn't have to, of course, because he made it, he wrote it. If he doesn't want to make it open source and give the code to anyone, then that's within his rights. But if it was me, I would have open sourced it. If I decided I didn't want to work on it anymore because you, you because people gave me the shits, I'd at least give them the code to let them um, recompile it for the new versions of Max, because that's all it needs. It just needs to be recompiled on the new SDK that comes with Max 2020. No, no code probably even needs to be changed. It just needs to be recompiled. It's a simple, quick thing to do. But you can't do it without the original code. Sniper Girl says, yeah, uh, Sniper says reverse engineering it with programming. You probably could, but I mean, it's, uh, reverse engineering anything is, is not an easy thing. Not unless you're a superstar of programming, uh, which I'm not. Um, and, and again, it would be against the law if he hasn't um, given the code out. You, reverse engineering it could could be tricky. You, you get into, you know, he owns that code. You can't really do that legally. Android Lust says, well, uh, one cent profit is one cent profit. That's what I think too. Um, you know, you got one cent, at least you got one cent. It's better than zero cents. But, you know, uh, that's, I don't understand why he cracked the shits about it. But anyway. Sniper Girl says, uh, could you export the pillars to Max 2019? And yeah, I could actually do that, but then I'd have to reinstall Max 2019 because when I installed 2020, I uninstalled Max 2018. Because uh, I generally, when I work, I work with just one version of Max. <laughs> so I could, and it mean I'd have to reinstall 2019. I don't think it's against the terms from Autodesk to have more than one version installed. I'd have to check that. Could be, uh, Autodesk might not like that, I'm not sure. But you can certainly run multiple versions of Max on the one machine, that's not a problem. Because I've done it before. So that could be a possibility. You are right, Sniper Girl. Smurfberry says Hacker Man is a character from a Kung Fury. Kung Fury. He can hack anything, he has a power glove. Oh, okay. <laughs> Smurfberry says Illegal Smeagol, if you already have it and you aren't redistributing it, do what you want with it. Yeah, I think people have actually written to him asking him if they can have the code or if he can open source it. I don't think he's. I don't think he's happy. He wants to do that. I think people have asked. Um, Sniper Girl says, "Think for the vines, it might be worth it." Yeah, well, it could be, but we could be. We could get away with around it though by using um, Speed Tree. So we're not completely stuck. Uh, and I may need to reinstall the older version of Max anyway when I sell my models because I don't want because I <clears throat> because I sell the, the model as uh, an OBJ file, an FBX file, and a Max file generally. I, I don't want the Max version people to, to need the latest version of Max to use it. Like in in Max 2020, I can save all the way back to Max version 2017 in the drop down uh, Autodesk have written that into Max where you can save it out as older versions, but only back to 7, 2017. Um, when I was using Max 2018, I could save all the way back to Max 2015. So I like to save back as far as possible to give people who work with older versions of Max, so the people that work with older versions of Max can still use the model. Because um, with Max 2020, I can only save out as Max 2017, which means you would need Max 2017 or higher to be able to use my model. So it always, it's always good to give people as broad an option as possible that might want to buy your stuff. We'll see how we go. Um, Sniper Echo says Autodesk are so good with file formats. 
But yeah, generally, that's why I give people the option of an OBJ or an FBX as well. That way they can bring it in. They can import it into any software they use, not just Max. And they are generally pretty good auto. That's allowing you to save back three versions. I think that's pretty good. Sniper Echo says, wow, I found the one post the Ivy guy made. <laughs> Did you find it, Sniper Echo? Yeah. You can see what he says. He got the, he cracked the shit. He cracked the shit. Let's try this texture because this is really interesting. Uh, let's um, scale it a bit more. Now, normally this sort of, this, you saw the original photograph of this terrace, of this um, rotunda. It was very plain, very boring. And normally a column, you wouldn't actually have a terracotta tile. But a tile could look really, really cool, particularly if we just um, make it a bit more interesting by overlaying a couple of other sort of stuff on it. Porcelain column. Yeah, I know, I know. Now, normally you, could, you wouldn't, and it could be a bit much because it's a very um, busy texture. And when you have 12 of them, or have, I think there are about 12 columns, it could start to look a bit much. But trial and error, that's why we can swap back between Substance Painter, whoops, I hit my mic, Substance Painter and, um, and Max to see whether we like it or not. Andrew Loss says, someone insulted his work, and I guess it's a bit understandable. I didn't think somebody insulted his work. He, I, he got insulted because somebody donated one cent, or one euro, I think it was. Um, everyone I've spoken to or seen written a, have written about his stuff loves his work. I love his work. I thought it was great. I used it a lot. I love that Ivy plugin. Sniper says, that guy does say, keep up the good work and play with toys I don't share anymore, at least not for free. So maybe a paid version is available directly? Uh, I haven't asked, but not from what I've heard. From what I've heard, there is no version available anymore. Maybe. Maybe you could... Maybe he'll recompile it for 2020 if you pay him, maybe. I haven't tried. Um, yeah, so it could be, could be. Wild Goose, thank you for the follow. And uh, Xenobia, <laughs> Zenobia Art, thank you also for following me on Twitch. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. So thanks, Zeno, Zenobia Art and Wild Goose for the follow. Again, remember guys and girls, uh, do join the Discord server. There's the link I popped in chat. Just if you want to show your work in the gallery or you want me to show it on stream, you can pop it in there in the gallery. There's tutorial section there. There's uh, you know, a lot of things to keep you occupied on the Discord server when I'm not streaming. So, And a good group of people, despite what Sniper Girl says. They are all very friendly and very helpful. Um, yeah, so... Normally we wouldn't probably go with um, with something this busy for that uh, terrace. I'm just going to go back to the terrace here and close that for a minute. But I think it might might look interesting. It could look good. It could look awful, but it could look good. Um, and it's easy for us to change if we don't like it because we're going to save the project so we can come back and we can pick something else. Uh, I'm actually just going to go through here and see if there is anything else that might be interesting as far as an underlying texture goes. Mm, let, let's throw something on top of it though, I think. Um, Let's see what we can do with this wall tile unstuck. I'm going to throw that over the top. I'm going to uh, increase the scale a little bit. I'm just going to turn that off so I can see the underlying texture again. Just going to reduce that a little bit. Okay, let us use a smart mask here. And let's go with... Um, let's go with... Let's try this soft damages one. Of 
global balance. Curvature. So it's not actually doing what I want. Um, I don't want to do it. I don't want to fade. I want. I want a different sort of look. I want it to sort of look like the original tiles have sort of fallen off on some spots, but less of a faded value. So I think that um, smart mask here is not the one we actually want. So let's try a different one. Why won't you let me delete you? Remove mask, that's what I want. Let's try a different smart mask. Um, maybe, maybe, let's try this ground dirt one. Okay, let's, um, do an invert on it. Uh, Sniper Girl says, wow, well, think my IB issues might be solved. You got a Maya script? I'm so jealous. <laughs> Find me a Mac script for IB as well, Sniper Girl. I still don't know if this one's going to be useful for us either. Unfortunately. We can keep trying different masks to see if we can find one that's going to be suitable. Because this one's not doing what I want. What else have we got to play with here? Um, Snappy Girl says to Android Lost, you're welcome. Haven't tried it, so no clue how it works. Let's try. See, the, the reason we're having a problem with this is because, again, the curvature is just, it's a, it's a cylinder, so there are no nooks and crannies. So the curvature map is not really doing a lot. That's the problem. Let's try the moss from the top. Let's see if we can get any, anything into it. No, again, that's giving us that fade out. I don't really want that. Um, I could do it by hand. That would be doable, but time consuming if I paint the mask in by hand. Okay, let's see. What have we got here to play with? See if we can't make this work. That's a bit better. So I want it to look like the tiles have sort of fallen off. So we're, we're seeing the underlying pattern behind this pattern. And that's the sort of effect I'm looking for. So I want it to, to look like the, uh, the some of the tiles have actually fallen off and the pattern is being some of the pattern is, is, for, is wearing off and we're seeing the, the tile behind the pattern. Just to give the columns a little bit more interest. Uh, 
Uh, let's throw down a dirt because I don't want the columns to look this clean. So I'm going to go back into our materials. And we're going to use one of those dirt substances. Just wait for it, substance to catch up here. Um, where is it? Where is it? Mud. Mud or mortar? Mud. Let's throw it out. Mud. Uh, let's turn off the height information because I don't want that. I just want to use it like dirt, not like mud. Um, upping the resolution, the scale a little bit. Let us... I'm just going to change the colour as well. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. You're back, at, back on the gas station, Sniper Girl. Good to hear. Um, good, I'm glad you posted that in Discord too. That would be handy. I'm just pulling down here on this... Um, dirt color a bit. I want it to be darker. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find a smart mask. Um, let's see what would be good. Let's try... Uh, let's try surface worn. Pull up here and have a look. I'm just pulling in a little bit of dirt just to make it look like the tile is a little dirty. Not quite so pristine and clean and new. Look at the ambient occlusion. Now I'm just pulling back. I don't want it like that. I want it just a little subtle. Just so it's just a little discolored here and there on the column. You can sort of see it through here. Um, curvature. And again, no. World space normal. Position offset. I might pull up on the position offset. Uh, what this is doing is, if you look at the top of the column... Where am, where am I? That's the wrong one, it's this one. It sort of comes, starts at the top and works its way down. So, none, and then it starts coming in from the top and works its way down the column. So I might just pull up on that just a little bit so the top of the column's a little bit dirtier. Yes, Sniper Girl is full of good links and good and good stuff. You're not seeing a 2020 version for Max? Damn! Damn! Uh, let's save our project here. Uh, let us... I didn't need to do that. Just, again, it's column one. Let's rename our texture. Let's save our project. No, I don't want to save as. Uh, let's export. No, I don't want to export the mesh. <laughs> What's going on, Philip? Get your act together. Export the textures. Uh, column one, that's fine. Um, again, I'm going to export it as 4K. Yes, I know, it's probably a bit overkill for one column. And I probably will knock it back to 2K, but for now, 4K will do. And Wild Goose, thank you for following the channel as well. I do appreciate it. So thank you, Wild Goose, for the follow. Again, you guys, make sure you um, you join the Discord server. I know <laughs> not everyone wants to. You don't have to, but it's a good group of guys and girls on Discord. Everyone's very friendly. Despite what Sniper Girl says, she's also very friendly. Uh, and it's a good place to hang out and chat. Particularly if you've got any problems or you want to show off your work. 
Okay, let us jump back into Max. Let us set up that shader, that DirectX shader, so we can see what it looks like, like it does inside of uh, Substance Painter. Uh, so first things first, just a standard shader. Column 1, I'm just going to use the color channel for that. And now we're going to set up the DirectX shader, so a standard Right click, change material map type, change it to DirectX shader. Uh, discard the old material. First thing we do is we change it from HLSL to interactive. Uh, let's load in the normal map. I'm making sure we remember to override the gamma. I know I harp on about it, but it's, it's really important. If you don't override the gamma, it's not going to look right. Uh, metallic. Uh, roughness. Which will be this one. And ambient occlusion. Which will be this one. Now let's turn them on by setting these to 1. So normal map. Color map, metallic, roughness, and ambient occlusion. You can actually do an emissive as well if you have an emissive in your texture. Just wanted to point that out. And that's selected, so let's assign the material. And let's have a look, see. Right, that's one version. All, all we need to do now is make a few adjustments to create two more different versions and then we can just start repeating them around the outside of the um, of the terrace. But I, I can sort of add a few here that will reuse this one. So if I have one, that texture there, I can reuse it probably again here. So let's assign the material. And that means I can reuse it probably here. And uh, I may be able to get away with reusing it here as well. Um, what's going on here? Smoker says, Master, my or Master Race, human readable mail files for the win. Snappy Girl says, because I'm always looking for stuff. Uh, Snappy Girl says, you've done this before, right? Uh, the Source Slinger, the Source Slinger says, do you play Dark Souls? I do. Oh, well, I have. I do like Dark Souls. I, I really like the architecture and the design of Dark Souls, of the architecture. The character stuff is really great too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I really like the design of the games, of the, the architecture they did in the games. They did a beautiful job, beautiful job on all of the Dark Souls games. Um, I, I don't try, I don't play it a lot because it's too hard. <laughs> Andrew Lust says, I remember I played Dark Souls, didn't even beat the first boss before I gave up. Yeah, it's really hard. Uh, the Source Slinger says, you really got to have a ton of free time to get into it. Yeah, I know, and I don't have a lot, unfortunately. Android Lust says, well, if it was the tutorial boss, to be honest, or something like that, I figured I'm horrible at the tutorial. It's not going to go well for me. You've never played Dark Souls? Well, I can recommend it, Sniper Girl, if you want a lot of aggravation and you want to scream and break your controller. Because it's hard. It's a hard game. Those Japanese know how to make hard games. And it's certainly hard. Oops. <laughs> Let's just get into position here by selecting something so Max has something to lock onto. So I can have a look at my columns. Just, just jumping back into Substance Painter really quickly. Okay, now you'll notice here that it looks a lot lighter in Substance Painter than it does inside of Max. That's probably uh, something to do with the ambient occlusion map. So if I turn the ambient occlusion off, 
I can do that just by changing this from 1 to 0 in the DirectX shader. Didn't light it up a lot, that's interesting. Actually, I think the reason that it looks a little bit different is because I'm not using a HDRI map in the background, which um, Substance Painter does by default. There is a HDRI map going on in the background that we can't see. That's why we're getting it looking lighter. It will look a bit lighter when we actually start doing the renders, uh, or I could add a HDRI map to the environment here if I wanted to, which I might do a little bit later on once we get a few more bits and pieces textured up. Uh, but aside from that, I think that probably might be okay for our columns. I'm actually going to turn that um, ambient occlusion back on. Let us do a quick save. Yes, let us do a quick save. Um, Smurfberry says, I'm offended that Substance assumes the final renderer will be using a HDR high map. Yeah, well, it's just, yeah, <laughs> you're offended. HDR high maps are really useful. I mean, but we're not going to need one when we do the beauty renders in view because we're actually setting up a 3D environment in view to do the beauty renders, so we don't need to fake it with a HDR high map. We'll actually be using the reflected um, the radiosity of the actual environment and the reflection from the actual environment. So um, we won't need it in, in view, but we might, I might throw one in Max here so we can get a bit a better of an idea because they are really useful to for you know for, for nice reflections and things. The HDRI really helps. Sniper Girl says, ended up releasing the bakes from the uh, manhole cover in Discord, allowing people to use as they want. Well, that's incredibly good of you, Sniper Girl. Thank you for doing that. Well, there you go. Sniper Girl has been generous. If you want to join the Discord, click the link I've just popped in Twitch chat there and um, and the bakes that uh, Sniper Girl did of the manhole cover, you guys can use. So thank you, Sniper Girl. That's really good of you. Um, I think we might leave it there for today, though, guys and girls. I have to get myself organized waiting for this phone call to pick up my friend from hospital and it's the end of the stream anyway. So I do want to thank you all very much for hanging out with me and for watching. Um, I want to thank Digitalis for the host as well. That's incredibly good of you. Thank you Smurfery for hosting as well. And again, I want to thank uh, Kreutz TV, e Nginx 3D, Ian EZ, Dracula, Sniper Girl, of course, for the subscription. Uh, Smurfery Barbecue for the host. El Columbia 12. Uh, Zeno Zenobia Art, Wild Goose, Lord Vermin, and The Source Slinger. Thank you all for following the channel. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back live again on Monday next week at 5 p.m. Pacific Time in the United States. Um, the stream will go live, will go out on Friday and Saturday, but they catch up streams of yesterday's and today's stream. So I'm live again on Monday next week, 5 p.m. I hope you guys and girls have a great weekend. Uh, again, thank you very much for being here, watching and hanging out with me. You guys take care and I will see you all again on Monday next week. See you guys.